So you're considering making a move to St. Pete Beach, Florida. Well, this video is the one for you because today we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of living in St. Pete Beach, Florida. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome and know that we make videos that are all things Tampa Bay, what it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches and the sunshine. And feel free to hit that subscribe button, click that little bell, that way you can be notified every time we drop a video just like this. My name is Juan Alcala and I'm the team leader at the True Living Group at EXP and a licensed real estate professional in the state of Florida and in the state of Michigan. And I'm getting phone calls from, from people all over the country, just like you, who are considering either relocating or investing in the Tampa Bay area. And what I'd like you to know is my contact information is linked below. If you have any questions um, or comments about the Tampa Bay area, you'd just like to know what's going on, please feel free to connect with me directly. You can call, text message, email. Heck, you can even reach out to me on Instagram. Whatever it takes to get a hold of me, just know that when it comes to relocating or investing in the Tampa Bay area, we've got your back. All right, so we're going to get into the pros and cons of living in St. Pete Beach. And what I want to let you know is, um, if you guys stay to the end, I am going to drop a few other points of interest um, that I think are really beneficial for you to know if you're considering visiting or relocating to the area, because there's some really cool hidden gems in the area that I definitely want to highlight um, that are just on the outskirts of St. Pete Beach specifically, um, but also inside of St. Pete Beach as well. All right, cool. So let's get into our pros and cons. All right, so the first pro of living in St. Pete Beach is the beaches, y'all. It's called St. Pete Beach for a reason. And St. Pete Beach is the highlight here. That's the public beach. That's the one everybody knows about. But there are a few more that you should probably know about, too. You know, there's Upham Beach. There's Sunset Beach. There's Passa Grill Beach. There's also a dog beach, which is super important to know because most of Pinellas County does not allow for dogs to be on a public beach. You have to have a private beach in order to do that. Um, so great thing to know. Number two is the casual lifestyle. And when it comes to living in St. Pete Beach, everyone is laid back. That is the vibe that you're gonna feel. That's the, what you're going to see. Shorts, flip-flops, tank tops. This is basic attire. It's also dinner attire. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of formal. There are the places where you can get dressed up and go and have a great dining experience. Um, and that is there. But for the most part, you're going to see everyone running around in the island vibe, so to speak, which is flops, shorts, and shirts. And if you're pretentious, this is probably one of those things that may turn you off. So it's something to keep in mind. The number three pro of living in St. Pete Beach is the activities. There are so many outdoor activities to take advantage of. You can go paddle boarding, canoeing, kayaking, parasailing, boating, fishing. The list goes on and on and on. There are so many great activities to take advantage of when you're living in St. Pete Beach. The number four pro of living in St. Pete Beach is the school system. Most of the schools in St. Pete Beach are rated extremely high. Um, a plus rating, if you look at sites like niche.com, if you look at other resources, you'll find that they have extremely good ratings. I'll link some of those resources down below so you can do your own research, but know whether it's going to be a public school, a private school, or a charter school, which are all offered in St. Pete Beach, all of these schools tend to rank on the high side. So keep that in mind. So if schools are important to you in that relocation, if you're considering moving your family here, that's something to take note of. Also, you know, let's be honest, typically where you see good school districts, home values tend to stay higher longer. So it's something to take note of as well. And that brings us to our number six pro, which is housing. And housing in St. Pete Beach is awesome. And the reason that I would say that is because of this. 
There are very few HOAs unless you're in a condominium development, but the homes themselves have a ton of character. And what you're going to find because you don't have a homeowners association is you're going to find this great mix of old world Florida, you know, bungalows that were built in the early 1900s. And then you're also going to find newer construction properties that, you know, people have either came in and purchased the old property, tore it down and built it up. We refer to that as a scrape and build or, you know, maybe they bought a plot of land and were able to develop that. Now, there isn't very many opportunities for um, straight land development at this point, but housing is very cool because of it. You get this really cool vibe of both old and new Florida, which is great. The community overall is smaller. You know, just shy of 10,000 people live in St. Pete Beach as, as the time of this recording. You can get a one bedroom, one bath condo. You know, when I say close to the water, the entire city of St. Pete Beach is close to the water, but you can get a one bedroom, one bath condo at the time of this recording for right around well, it's in the low 300s. If you're considering buying a single family home, those are going to start somewhere in the $700,000 range on the low side. Um, those are going to be a little bit smaller. It's probably going to be one of those old cottages or old, old craftsman style bungalows that you saw before. Um, and you can definitely you know, get a very nice home in the area too. You know, if your budget is in is in the, the millions, then you're not going to have a problem fulfilling your needs in terms of housing because there are plenty of opportunities for multi-million dollar properties to be purchased for you as well. The number seven pro of living in St. Pete Beach, Florida is there are no state income taxes. And if you're new to the area or um, considering making that move, you know, we got clients moving in from all over the country right now, Seattle, California, New York, where your income taxes are a considerable portion of the taxes that you pay every year, you know, talking in, in the, you know, the high eight, nine, 10% range, even as much as 13, 14% if you're living in California. So that is a considerable savings when you're making that jump and you're coming from one state to another. So keep that in mind when you're looking at your budget, how to all allocate everything. This is a strong consideration. And I know it's something that meant a lot to me and my family as well. When we were looking at relocating from the mid Midwest to the St. Petersburg area, we were looking at the fact that we were going to have a significant bump in our income because we were no longer paying that income to the state of Michigan. So keep that in mind. It's definitely a pro, no state income tax. And number eight on the list of pros is weather. Now, I know everyone talks about this in all of their videos, but y'all, it's why we moved here to begin with. It's called the Sunshine State for a reason, right? And St. Petersburg is called Sunshine City for a reason. And when you come to St. Pete Beach, you are going to be blessed with wonderful weather, especially during the wintertime. The average temperatures, you know, from November through April are hovering around in the low 70s. And it's definitely possible to see days, you know, jump up into the mid 80s. It's not very common, but it does happen. It's very seasonable and I love it, right? Low 70s, low humidity. There's a nice breeze because you're close to the water. It's at the tip of the Southern Peninsula of Pinellas County. And that exposes you to more of that breeze that you get from the coastal waters. And it's awesome. So it is a wonderful pro. And I know that it gets discussed all the time, but don't lose sight of the fact that there is so much sun here, you know, and if you're coming from an area that doesn't have a whole lot of sunshine, I promise you it's going to help change your mood and it just makes you feel good. So take advantage of the weather and know that you are going to be blessed because of it. So now we're going to get in our list of cons about living in St. Pete Beach. And I just want to be honest with you guys. It's not all sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. You know, we're going to experience some things down here just like everyone else across the country. And, and what I'll say is some of ours are unique to us and others are not at all. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. Um, and just know, like, if you're going to come and trade, you know, one thing and, and, and receive all this beautiful sunshine and the, the beaches and every, all of those beautiful pros we talked about, it's probably going to come at, at some cost. And that's what I want to share with you guys because hey, when I was looking to relocate, I was looking for this type of information. I really was trying to figure out what was the best decision for me and my family before we made that jump. You know, 1,200 miles is a long way. So I want to make sure that you guys have, you know, the information you need to make a qualified decision and the one that works best for you as well. So let's get right into these cons. 
And con number one is going to be the traffic. Now, when you come to St. Pete Beach, the roads are a little bit narrow. Remember, a majority of this town was founded, you know, at the turn of the century in the 1900s. So there wasn't a giant need for having four lane highways and making the roads very accessible to a lot of traffic. But during the season here in St. Pete Beach, we do get a tremendous influx of population. We call them snowbirds, right? Or and and let me let me say this term because technically I used to be a snowbird as well. A snowbird is someone who lives up north and migrates south for the winter. If you've never heard that term before, um, but that's what they used to call us when we'd make that trip um, every single winter coming down to Florida. Like here comes the snowbirds, but. We have a season and, and basically from the end of November um, until right around Mother's Day, we have a, an influx of population and you'll, you know, people who, you know, may have lived in mountain towns or northern towns who have second homes here come down or, you know, there's a lot of vacation and tourism and that is definitely something that puts stress on the traffic in the area, right? You'll see people walking all up and down the roads because there are a lot of resorts in St. Pete Beach as well. And foot traffic causes traffic to slow down or stop. You know, people are crossing the street because they're coming from the beach to the resort across Gulf, uh, Gulf Boulevard. And of course that backs traffic up, you miss a light. And it's just this perpetual cycle of taking longer than you feel like it should. And our lights here in traffic are in Florida, um, and our traffic lights here in Florida are longer as well. So keep that in mind when you're coming out and traffic is that could be a stressor to you. Um, but again, it's during season when it's pretty bad. And then outside of that, you don't have too much to worry about. But, you know, hey, for the sunshine, I'll try that any day of the week. And the number two con of living in St. Pete Beach is the bugs. Now, there are many different varieties of bugs down here. Um, some of them creepy crawlies that I have no interest in hanging out with and other ones you've probably seen somewhere else before. But, you know, we've got mosquitoes, which are, are pretty gnarly. We've got um, cockroaches. We've got wood destroying organisms like termites. Um, there are these bugs they call no see and literally they call them no see them, no see because you can't see them. <laughs> and they bite and they hurt. And I think they're worse than mosquitoes. So this is something you have to kind of keep in mind. And because of our weather being subtropical, we definitely are going to have bugs. And just know this, they are going to be part of your life. No matter how much you get your house sprayed, no matter what you're doing, they, they are going to work their way from the outside, inside of your house. Now, it should, it should not happen very often if you're getting it sprayed and taken care of. But just keep in mind. You know, what you don't want to be doing is, is giving those critters an opportunity to make their way in. So making sure that you're taking care of your home diligently is important, um, but more importantly, <laughs> knowing that they're there. You know, we've also got some snakes in the area, um, a couple poisonous ones, but they're very uncommon. We've been here for four years, y'all, and I've seen one snake and it was not of the poisonous kind. So keep that in mind. You know, I know they talk about, you know, um, gators, but I've never seen a gator in four years outside of the parks and the wildlife preserve where I would expect to see them. Now, can they get around? Do, the answer is absolutely, but it's not common. I know that's a fear that we had um, before relocating is like we had a, a, a uh, you know, a, a five-year-old, or I'm sorry, a, a four-month-old daughter when we moved down and that was a concern of ours. So keep that in mind, just know that they're there, but it's not the end of the world. And the really cool thing about St. Pete Beach is there's this great coastal breeze that does tend to push off a lot of flying bugs, right? So you're not going to get the mosquitoes as bad as if you were, say, in Clearwater um, or, or St. Petersburg away from the water specifically. Um, you know, as you move inland, those, those issues tend to arise because you don't have that great coastal breeze. So keep that in perspective. The number three con of living in St. Pete Beach is the weather. Now, Temps in the summer in August will average right around 90 degrees. And not only will they average 90, but it's also muggy. And if you've ever lived through a Gulf Coast summer, the best way I can describe it is like waking up to a Labrador retriever breathing right in your face. <laughs> it's stifling, y'all. And I'm not kidding. It is hot. And, you know, from, you know, August, September, it is the warmest months by far. They average right around 90 degrees. And that's an average temperature. So, you know, we're hitting, you know, mid nineties and at night, here's the big thing that you need to know if you're not used to it at night, 
our temperatures are 85, 86, 87 degrees, and there is not a lot of relief. And I was not accustomed to that. You know, if we would hit 90 degrees back home in Michigan, it would be very rare to, to, to not get back down in the, into the high 60s or at least the low 70s. But when you wake up here in the middle of the night and you go outside at 3 a.m. or so let's say you're going to the gym at 4 a.m. in the morning and it's 86 degrees and the relative humidity is 91 percent your car is completely covered in water. That is weird and you never get a break. So it's something to keep in mind. It is hot. Now, again, we talked about weather being a pro and it absolutely is. Remember, you're going to get eight months of sunshine here, no matter what, which is awesome. We have a long rainy season. That's something else to take into consideration. You know, basically June, July, August, September are also rainy season. There, there's some pretty big storms that kick up. And with that weather, you know, we get some pretty big tropical storms that pass through the area and there is the potential for hurricanes as well. Now, one of the things about the St. Petersburg area is, we, you know, we've been very blessed and haven't taken a real strong um, hit for a hurricane for, oh, I think, over 100 years, which is an absolute blessing. Um, but, you know, it, the potential is there and it can be a bit... Um, What's the word I want to use? Like it can rattle you the, the strength of these storms. But what I want you to know is these houses were built to withstand this type of activity. Most of the homes, you know, that were built, you know, from the, the 60s on were built of block. And these things are solid, y'all. If I go knock on this wall, you it, it will hold up. So I want you to keep that in mind while it is a negative, right? A con that the weather is super hot and we can have the potential for hurricanes and the tropical storms are rough. The, the pro, I it, it handily outweighs it. So I would not be overly concerned about it, but it's something to take note of. So that leads me to the number four con of living in St. Pete Beach, which is red tide. And this is something that's become a little, I would like to say common in my life. I know it's not common overall, but we, you know, since 2018, when we've moved here, the red tide has come twice, right? So four years, um, we've seen it twice. And the red tide is an algae bloom that tends to hang out in really warm waters, which we get, you know, our, 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 our average temperature in the Gulf coast in summer is 85 degrees. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like bathwater, right? Um, but with that comes the potential that to fuel, you know, the, these algae blooms because they need sun and they need food. And, you know, and we feed them fertilizer off of our lawns. It runs off into the Gulf Coast and they get plenty of sunshine. So these algae blooms will build up. And y'all, I know I'm giving you a negative here. This is a con, but I want to keep it in perspective. This is not something that is here every day. It's not something that is here every year you know, along with the area that you're moving to, there are going to be some of those um, nuances. And this is one of those things. And it's definitely something to keep, you know, track of, because what it does is it, it really hurts the marine life. And in turn, that marine life, you know, unfortunately, it dies. What happens is the, the algae bloom is literally suffocating the fish. So we lose our, our, our marine life. And, you know, they would literally pick these things up in barges and they start taking these dead fish off to an area. Well, what happens is it stinks, right? You've got dead rotting car carcasses, and pardon my language here, that wash up on the shore. It makes us, our beaches terrible during this time when it's happening. But the county does a great job of coming out and cleaning it up right away. They're, they're trying to uh, clean it up while it's in the Gulf and they're taking off to incinerators and burning, you know, burning these, uh, these dead fish. But it's hard to, to watch and it's, and it's really unfortunate. It's a bummer, but it's part of the ecosystem that we're in. But the thing that I want you to take note of here is the fact that it is very, very um, hard on your, 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 your lungs. It reduces our air quality dramatically to the point where you most likely won't want to go to a beach when the red tide is bad. There's times when it's present when you don't even know. It's not a big deal. But when it gets bad like this, trust me, you'll know because you'll walk out. And I remember the first year we came down when we were shopping for houses here. And I want to share this story with you guys. And I know I'm going a little long on this, but bear with me. It was me and my wife, we had flown down and we were looking for houses and we had our baby with us and we were walking out to the beach. And one of the things we recognized right away, it was September, it was still hot. 
Um, you know, it was hotter than we thought it should be, but we're not from here. So what do we know? Um, but we walk out and I remember as soon as we walked over the sand dune to get on the beach, this smell, it was like, boom, it just, man, it was on you. And I was like, this is, it was terrible. Right. And here we are with our baby. We're like, we've got to get off the beach. And we were down for an entire week and we were not able to swim in that water because I'm not going to put my child in that water. Right. So we ended up driving a full hour north before the, the, the algae bloom cleared up enough for us to get in the water. And again, I'm not trying to be hyper negative. I just want to make sure I'm sharing the truth with you guys, because there are going to be these things that we don't love about the areas we move into. And let me just tell you, the red tide is definitely one of those things. So that moves us to our number five con, and that's going to be maintenance. And when I say maintenance, I mean, listen, you're living on a peninsula that is at the southern point of this peninsula that ex is exposed to the Gulf Coast. And there's a lot of wind, there's a lot of weather. And with those things comes some, some challenges to your property, okay? Um, you're going to find rust all over the place. Anything that's metal that's outdoors <laughs> is going to rust at one point. So keep that in mind. Um, it's really hard on your exterior paint. Um, and remember, a lot of our properties are stucco on the outside and they're painted. Um, but our painters are professionals. They do a great job of you know doing doing the coating that they need to get it on there. But it does accelerate the process. It, it you know it accelerates the process of your roof breaking down sooner because of the sunlight, right? Um, the other thing is, is there's sand. If you're, if you're right on the water, there's sand blowing around more and you do have more wind. So it creates more friction, right? So it's then things tend to wear out faster. Your, um, your outdoor patio furniture is definitely going to wear out faster. So keep these things in mind when you're coming, because the maintenance is also part of that beauty, right? You're going to get all of these beautiful things, this beautiful weather and that gorgeous sunshine, but there is a cost to be paid. So keep that in mind. Number six on our list of cons when living in St. Pete Beach are the amenities. Now, there are tons of great restaurants. There are a plethora of great restaurants. There are a ton of resorts, but there are not a lot of day-to-day -day amenity things available to you. Now, there's grocery stores. There's a Publix directly across the street from St. Pete Beach. So that's as convenient as all get out, right? But what you don't have is a local airport. That's a 40-minute drive at least, okay? What you don't have is a Target at your disposal. What you don't have is a mall to go get the necessities that you may need for school shopping, those types of things. You'll have to drive to Tyrone Mall in St. Pete, uh, St. Petersburg to, to get to the nearest mall, which is going to be 25-minute, 30-minute drive. Um, with traffic. So just keep that in mind. You know, you've got the, the things you need, CVS, bank, you know, grocery stores, those things are there. But for everything else, you're going to have to leave St. Pete Beach, which gets us back in that traffic <laughs> um, to get to those things. So keep that in mind. The amenities are a little bit tough here, but you're trading that for the sunshine. The number seven con of living in St. Pete Beach is jobs. And um, there are not a lot of opportunities for employment in St. Pete Beach. A lot of the times people travel to their job. It's a, um, you know, a resort town. Um, it's a second family uh, town. You know, there's, yes, there's a lot of primary residents here, but it, again, we have this huge influx because of our weather during the winter. Um, and there's a great amount of service jobs, but there, you know, you're not going to go work at Raymond James. You're going to have to drive all the way to Tampa to do that. Um, a lot of the times, you know, we're, they're business owners that live in the area. Um, but there's contracting jobs; those are available to you. So if that's something that is important to you as well, if you own a contracting company, it's a great area to come to. Uh, also, you have the medical. We have defense contracting. Most people that live in St. Pete Beach drive to their employment or they work remote. And that's what you're going to find a lot of just because of the location. And again, it's not set up to be a metropolitan area. It's set up to be a lifestyle area. So keep that in mind. All right. So our eighth and final con on this list today is housing. And I know what you're going to say, Juan, that's two pros that you have that are also cons. And I want to give you some perspective, right? Because there's good and bad with everything. Often your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. And here's what I'll say. 
Affordable housing is very difficult to find in St. Pete Beach. Most likely, it doesn't exist for the average income. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Um, now, I'm not saying it's not possible. All things are possible. Maybe you know somebody who's you know um, willing to sell to a family member or friend that doesn't list their home on the market and is willing to take considerably less than, than the current market value in order to do that. That's how you would end up there, right? But for somebody making the average salary in America right now, I'm just going to be honest, guys, I don't know how you would do it because the housing, you know, we talked about it before, you know, 300,000 for a one bed, one, one bath condo, you know, while from a coastal perspective, that's not a lot of money right? It's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but it's not expensive. When you go look at other coastal regions, that it's, it's very affordable. Um, but if there's no jobs, meaning that you can't come and find a, you know, a, a job to support that type of lifestyle, it's going to be difficult. So keep that in mind. The other thing that we talked about was having no HOA, which people absolutely love because you know I don't know about you, but I don't like when somebody tells me where I have to put my garbage can. I don't leave it out in the road. I'm very courteous. The garbage truck comes, we pull it up behind the house, nobody can see it. But I don't want somebody knocking on my door telling me I need to move it by 1030 a.m. every day. <laughs> right. So this is something to take into consideration. But because of that, you have a wide variety of housing. You can have someone who has a beautiful 4000 square foot, three story home with a pool who has spent a tremendous amount of money and maybe lifetime savings to to build that asset. And right next to it, you can have an, a coastal cottage that is an absentee owner owner, someone who hasn't been to the house in 30 years and has no interest in putting a dime in it, and no one's going to tell them to do anything about it. So this is something that you want to take into consideration. Now, looking at the area, if you drive the streets, you're not going to find that there's cars on the lawns everywhere, you know, that, that somebody's not, mo that's not the lifestyle that is here. But you need to keep in mind that if someone wanted to paint their house purple, there ain't squat you can do about it, right? And that's something you definitely want to take into consideration. So what I would say is this, if you're thinking of relocating to the area here, please feel free to reach out to us. Give us a call. I do virtual tours every single day because a majority of our clients are relocation. A majority of our clients are coming from coastal areas or areas all over the country. They're relocating or investing here. So this is something we do every single day. I'd be more than happy to hop in the car, drive around the neighborhood and show you exactly what you're looking at before you would ever consider making that purchase. So just keep that in mind. This is something we do all the time and you can handle it too. And oh, by the way, if you made it this long, um, I, I, I hope that you got tremendous value from this video. Please feel free to click that subscribe button and hit that little bell also so you can be notified every time we drop a new video like this. And because you stayed this entire time, now I want to give you guys a few bonus insights. So what I want to do is give you guys some insider nuggets here of areas that you should go check out that may not be directly in St. Pete Beach, but also are in the surrounding area. But these are places that you have to go. If you come here, you've got to go see these things because it is well worth the trip. You, you're going to be happy to share it with your friends and family, the things you experience. So I want to make sure we get into those. And the number one thing that I think you should go check out is the Don Cesar Hotel. This place, y'all, is unbelievable. It is this beautiful, giant, pink, four-star hotel. And yes, I said pink. And trust me, I don't like pink houses. I'm not into that at all. But this thing is very unique and it's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Four stars, highly rated hotel, private beach behind it. It is unbelievable, y'all. You should go check it out. And what I really like about the Don Cesar is, you know, if you live in the area, whether you live in Tampa or you're a little bit further north in Wesley Chapel or you, uh, Wesley Chapel, or you live in St. Petersburg, you know, you know, it's a great date night. There's wonderful restaurants in the Don Cesar Hotel. And, you know, what a great place to come. Come, you know, if you live inland anywhere um, and you can't, you're not fortunate enough to live on the water or near the water, you know, call the Don Cesar Hotel, book a hotel night, bring your significant other, enjoy a great dining experience, enjoy the beautiful weather, enjoy the beautiful um, beach and enjoy the night, stay a weekend. I'm telling you, I don't even work at the hotel y'all, but it is stunning. You have to go check it out and you just have to see it. It's, I mean, it is absolutely stunning. I know I've said that a few times, but man, go check out the Don Cesar Hotel. 
All right. The second thing I want to give you with this is Fort DeSoto. Okay. Now Fort DeSoto is a park and it's got, you know, fishing, canoeing, camping. Um, and there's obviously a fort there. That's part of it too. There's hiking trails. It's got a dog beach, which is awesome. Right. And we talked about the beaches earlier. There are two dog beaches and forgive me. I totally forgot about that. The area is so dog friendly. Just make sure you know that, but there are two dog beaches in the area. Um, there's Pasa Grill dog beach, and then there's the dog, be uh, the dog park at, Fort DeSoto and the dog beach there as well. Um, it's just one of those wonderful spots you got to go check out. I strongly encourage you. And the third thing that I want to bring up on this list here is the Shell Key Preserve. And this is an area at the southern tip. There's a, a few keys out there that are protected um, uh, by the Wildlife Pr uh, Protection Agency. And it's beautiful. And what happens down here is the, the, the birds from the north migrate here. There's also birds that nest there. But what is really cool is this is an area where the sea turtles come and they nest as well. And I love this time of year, y'all. Um, they nest all along the coast, the Gulf Coast uh, and Pinellas County specifically. And it's something that we go down and try to capture. And obviously we're extremely respectful of it. You can't mess with their nest, which is wonderful. You don't want to be messing with it. But every once in a while during season, um, you will see a baby tortoise break free of a shell and start to run for the ocean, man. And I got to tell you, that is one of the most awesome experiences um, that you will ever see. And I will do my best to, I think I have video and it's probably going to be super grainy, but if I have it, I will share it with you here. Um, just know that it's going to be there because man, what an experience that was. I just remember that. And I was just like, wow, I never, ever imagined I would get to see that, but it was a very exciting thing to um, definitely witness to say the least. So so y'all, I hope that you had nothing but value from this video today. And thanks for sticking with me so long. I know that I got pretty long winded today, but when it comes to pros and cons, I think it's super important that we cover both sides of the fence, right? Everything's not going to be perfect. Everything's not going to be terrible. Um, I will say that this is a slice of paradise and I see it that way. And I hope that you do too, through, through my worldview of St. Pete beach. Um, and just know this, if you're looking to relocate, if you're considering investing in the area, my team here at the true living group would be more than happy to help facilitate that move or that investment. However, you got to get hold of me. My contact information is down below. Feel free to call text, email, or even direct message me on Instagram. When it comes to relocating the area, I got your back. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.